Welcome to the Tony Scott Internet Show. How are you? Hope everything is going good. Uh, the cold weather that's supposed to hit St. Louis should be, uh, temperatures going to be falling all day. Like yesterday was in the 70s. Like around 5 o'clock, it was like 70, 71. And then like at 5 o'clock today, it's supposed to be like 37. And then it's supposed to, I think the high tomorrow is um, supposed to be like 37. Uh, it's just, you know, weather's weather. It's funny, everybody always says, in all my years of living in St. Louis, people always say, just wait 15 minutes and the weather change. People have said that in every city I've ever lived in. Houston, San Francisco, Detroit, they said, wait, wait a half hour, because it's a little different in Detroit, right? In Detroit, like, Labor Day, the weather literally turns to fall. No transition, it's just, bam! <laughs> it's just, you know, the day before Labor Day, it's like 88 degrees, uh, Labor Day, it's like 58 degrees, and then that's it. That's all. That's all. And it's very possible it'll snow like in May. It, I lived in Detroit, and it snowed like on the 5th of May, or it's like Cinco de Mayo, it snowed. And I was so mad. <laughs> I was like, what? I didn't sign up for this, man. I got to get out of here. And I ended up going to St. Louis, Missouri, gateway to the west. St. Louis County uh, Prosecutor Bob McCullough has repeated himself. He said this before. He said it again uh, yesterday that the uh, grand jury in the Michael Brown shooting case will not make a decision to indict Officer Darren Wilson until mid to late November. Now, that he said that, it's important to remember that the middle of the month is like Friday, is it not? Isn't it like today's like the 11th, 12th, 13th, like the 14th, 15th on, on Friday, right? So... I guess we could have a decision, in his words, maybe as early as the end of the week, possibly later in the month, what's going to happen. I don't know. What I do know is that uh, people are getting prepared for Officer Darren Wilson to not be indicted for murdering Michael Brown. And some people are are angry at people who keep saying that Darren Wilson's going to get off scot-free because they want an indictment and they don't think the saying that he's going to get away with it is helping. Well, you have to look at the pattern of of, uh, racial injustice in the St. Louis region. Not just in America, but in the St. Louis region, it has been horrible for many years. So you can understand why people feel that Darren Wilson's going to get away with murder. I hope and pray that he doesn't, but I don't know what's going to happen. You know, like I said uh, on another podcast, it wouldn't bother me to see him indicted because that doesn't mean he's going to go to jail. That means he's going to go to the next phase of the justice system, which would mean a trial. What will happen then? I don't know. But at the very least, he should be indicted and let's move on. At the very least, that has to happen. Now, TV stations here in St. Louis are doing stories about gun sales have increased like 50% or something since August. And, you know, they don't, we, we don't need stories like that. You know, you're, you're scaring people when you do that. Where's your responsibility? Is, is that a new story? No, man. I mean, Freedom of the press, I get that. You you do the stories that you want to do, I get that. But with that freedom comes some responsibility. And I just don't see where it's it's that big a story. I mean, it's okay to disagree with me, but I think for the greater good, that's not a story, man. I mean, come on. I don't think that's a story. They should just leave that alone. We don't even know that gun sales have increased 50% in the St. Louis area. They had one gun owner on TV said he had to restock his cabinet like three times over the weekend. I was like, man, really? Wow. Ben Stein is a former uh, President Nixon. He was on President Nixon's team back in the day. He was a Nixon administration official. He's hosted a game show. You may not know him. You know When you see his face, you'll know who I'm talking about. So just Google Ben Stein, S-T-E-I-N. And... He said last week that President Obama is the most racist president America has ever had. Now, that in itself is a very stupid statement, because what about the presidents in the past who have owned slaves? (laughs) What about those guys? They're not more racist than President Obama? I mean, come on, man. Dude, come on, man. And he says the real problem in the black community 
is gangs, is, you know, he says, it's an amazing thing. Blacks were on their way in this country, even after the horrors of slavery and then drugs came in. The destruction of families came in and the crisis in the black community is just absolutely unbelievable. And that seems to, to me is something that Mr. Obama could have addressed and he just ignored it completely. Well, he didn't ignore it completely. And here's, here's the thing. Anytime somebody says, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with the black community, and if they can say it in one sentence, they're full of crap. Because the problems in the black community, as most people who work in the black community or are, are part of the black community or are African Americans living in a black community, is that problems in the black community are multi-layered and multifaceted. You just can't say one thing is a problem in the black community. Drugs are a problem in the black community. But who brought the drugs to the black community? Black folks didn't do that. Right? Who spent decades, centuries, tearing down the self-esteem of black folks by saying that a black person is three-fifths of a white man. These things over a period of time have, have an effect on. I mean, it's multi-layered and multifaceted, and you can go on and on about these kinds of things. So to say that the problem in the black community is, and then it's just like one sentence, is ignorant, meaning you just don't know. Uh, it, it's, it's insensitive, and it's pretty stupid because... If for a man like him who supposedly has, a, you know, his intelligence is on a high level to try and sum it up in a, in a sentence or even a paragraph is just ridiculous. It just doesn't make any sense to even say something like that. But, you know, he's entitled to say what he wants. The calling the President Obama the most racist president America has ever had is laughable just on general purpose that we've had presidents who own black people. That trumps everything. That trumps everything. <laughs> I, just, I just don't understand people sometimes. That's crazy. That is truly crazy. The Manhattan Clinic that treated Joan Rivers before she died uh, apparently made a number of serious mistakes, including failing to identify deteriorating vital signs and providing timely intervention. This is according to a report that came out yesterday. Among the major errors that uh, the CMS found the clinic committed were, one, uh, failing to identify deteriorating vital signs and provide timely intervention, failing to record Joan Rivers' weight prior to the administration of medication for sedation, failing to consistently document the, document the dose of propofol that she was given, we all know what propofol is from the Michael Jackson situation, failing to get Joan Rivers informed consent for each procedure performed. So they didn't get a consent, they just did it? Is that what they're saying? Failing to ensure that Joan Rivers was cared for only by physicians granted privilege in accordance with clinic's bylaws. Failing to abide by its own cell phone policy, the report found that a photograph was taken of a surgeon and Joan Rivers while she was under sedation. So they used somebody to use a smartphone to take a picture of Joan Rivers while she was sedated. Wow. <laughs> that clinic, can they, I mean, can they still be in business? Can they be in business with those violations? Wow, if they did that to a celebrity and they knew she was a celebrity, they were taking selfies with her while she was knocked out. Then what are they doing to people who just, who, you know, regular people who only got a health plan and ain't got like a lot of money, you know, just regular people. What are they doing to those people? Man. That's frightening. That's crazy. President Obama wants to classify the internet as a utility. He wants to put it in the same category as like your the light the light company, the electric company. Which means it would be heavily regulated. Which means there'll be no fast lanes that you gotta pay extra for on the internet. You know, I don't know if you realize this right now, but your internet plan, depending on where you live. If you go over a certain amount of data usage, even if you're within your window of data usage that you pay for, if you get close to the end of it, they will slow down your internet connection. They will, what they call it, throttling. They will throttle you. And he's saying, we can't do that. We, we, can't, we cannot do that. In fact, listen to what President Obama said. Ever since the internet was created, it's been organized around basic principles of openness, fairness, and freedom. There are no gatekeepers deciding which sites you get to access. 
There are no toll roads on the information superhighway. Now, what you may not know, that if you use, like, Netflix to watch movies and stuff like that, Hulu, Netflix actually has to pay Internet providers uh, a fee because they use up a lot of data. And if they if they didn't pay the fee, basically they're blackmailed because if they didn't pay the fee, they would slow down the uh, the bandwidth speed, your Internet, the Internet speed. So the movies will look just horrible as they came across your television or whatever device you're watching it on. It would be choppy. It wouldn't be in HD. It would just be really crappy if Netflix refused to pay. Now, eventually, Netflix and these other companies who are going to have to do the same thing. They're going to pass that cost on to you. So Netflix right now is, what, seven ninety nine a month? You know, if something's not done, it's going to be $15 a month, not long from now, because they're going to have to pass that on to you. They can't keep absorbing that cost. They're not going to do it. They got stockholders to answer to. So, I mean, they're not going to do that. And there's no reason why. There's plenty of Internet. We can, You know, bandwidth, data transfers are made up of bits, right? Little bits. We can always make bits. Bits, there's no, we're never going to run out of bits, we're not going to do that. Don't let anybody fool you. We'll never run out of the internet. That's not going to happen. Is there going to be so many websites and all that on the internet that we're going to run out of room? No, no, that's never going to happen. So, you know, and, and to me, I think that every city, there should be more than one cable company. There should be competition. I should be able to choose. I mean, you got AT&T U-verse right now, but even cable TV, there's only one cable television company in, pretty much in every town. You get one. You get one, and you got to do business with them. Why do I have to do that? Why can't I do business like I do at a grocery store? I go where I can save money. Why do well, there are car dealerships that are different? They sell different cars. They sell the same cars, but they're different dealerships because they offer different deals. You know, why do we only have one light company? Although I think like in Houston, there's more than one, I think. I think there are a few. Is my understanding. But why don't we have more than one light company in a city? Why can't we get the best deal? Why can't we shop around like that? We can shop around at a hospital. Most people don't, but you can. You know, you can go to St. John's, you can go to St. St. Beverly's or wherever. You can go anywhere and, and get your, you know, get the best deal. People will tell you you should do that. You know, consumer reporters say you should do that. Most people don't because when it comes to your health, there's no shopping around. You go for the best deal possible. You go for, well, actually, you don't. You go for whatever you got to do. That's what, you know, whatever it costs, right? But really, if you think about it, you don't have to do that. We're starting to see some of that with these MRI companies, right? A, a hospital will send you to a company for an MRI that's going to charge you a, just a ridiculous amount. Or we've seen the commercials on TV, or you can go to the you know one of these MRI companies and they charge you a fraction of what you, the hospital is going to charge you. So all that is possible with the internet, though. You know the, these companies they want to they want to have such a hold. This is why we cannot even with the cable companies we can't pick and choose what channels we want to watch, like the a la carte system that that everybody is you know saying why can't we do that? Like you know I don't really don't watch Cinemax. I just I watch HBO. I watch uh, Oprah's channel, I watch Lifetime, I watch the Western channel, I watch ESPN, you know, things like that. But I don't want, I don't want, I don't want WeTV, you know, I don't want VH1, I don't want, you know, things like that. So why can't I just pick the ones I want? Well, the cable companies won't let you do that because they're not going to make, they're not going to make the money they make right now. But the game is changing because HBO is coming out with an app next year where you don't need cable. You don't need it. You can stream it right from your app. So they're going to, you know, they're, they're, they have found a way to do this that apparently is going to work. And now Showtime says they're doing the same thing. CBS says they're going to do the same thing, but it's crap because they're, they're going to charge you $6.99 a month to watch stuff. But you won't be able to watch it until the next day. Like if NCIS Los Angeles has a new episode, I can't watch it like in midnight tonight. I got to wait till tomorrow. You know, later in the day to get it up and watch it. I'm not paying six ninety nine, and plus you don't get you don't get any uh, NFL football. That's not included in the six ninety nine deal with CBS. So I'm not paying for that. No, man, come on, that's crazy. But the president does want net neutrality. That's what he wants, and he's going to get it probably because uh, the FCC commissioners. I think there's five of them. Three of them are Democrats. So they're probably going to go along with the president and vote net neutrality in, which is a great thing because it keeps the playing field level. 
You know, if if I have a YouTube, I do have a YouTube channel, but if I had like just tons of visitors and so many that I could, I could get throttled because I have so many and they won't give me the full fast speed unless I pay extra to my internet provider. That's not net neutrality. I can't afford to do that. These corporations can do it. They got billions of dollars in assets and things like that. So they're going to squeeze out the little man? No, they're not going to be allowed to do that. That's not going to happen if the president has his way. It looks like that may happen, that the president is going to get his way on this. Uh, the 49ers defensive end Ray McDonald is not going to be charged with domestic abuse. This according to the Santa Clara District Attorney's Office. They announced yesterday saying there's too little evidence to move the case forward. Plus, there are conflicting versions of the event. There's a lack of cooperation uh, from verifiable eyewitnesses. Uh, even the woman who they identify as Jane Doe is not cooperating. They said we cannot prove that a crime occurred. You know, they had said early on that she obviously had some sort of, of marks on her that would really indicate she had been abused. But no one, no one will say who did it. No, even she won't say who did it, even though she did it in a phone call. Now she's not talking. She don't want to talk. She wants it to go away. She's going to get her wish. You know, it, it, it's even been said that she hit him first, which is childish. Doesn't matter who hit who first. You just go. And here's the deal. I, I try to get people to understand. Okay, so now Ray McDonald is not going to be charged with domestic abuse. And let's just say, because we don't know that he really, that she actually fell down the stairs or got mad, you know, got, she got mad because he was on the phone with somebody and, and, and she turned around and ran to the wall and she, you know, gave herself a black eye. Possible. Uh, the, 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 the probability of it being likely is very low, but let's just say that happened. Right. And then, and she called him out. Look what he's gone through. Look at all this that he's gone through. Right. The whole world, he, I mean, he was on he was on the the domestic violence hit list, you know. Even though he's not going to be charged because no one will cooperate, that doesn't mean he didn't do it. But all this baggage, all this stink that is on him, will never go away. This is what I try to tell men. Men will say, if she hits me first, man, I don't take crap from nobody. But it's not about that, man. It's not about everybody knows you can mop the floor with her. Everybody, we all know that. But why put yourself in a position where you got to go down that road, where you got to hire a lawyer, where you got to post bond, where you got to take time off from work, where you may lose your job from taking off from work? You know, your employer might let you go just because you were charged with domestic violence, whether it's true or not. They're allowed to do that. You know, they, they can find a way to bury it under under you get rid of you for another reason, but they can do that. They get away with it more times than you think. Why put yourself in that position when you could have just walked away? That's always what I'm talking about. It's not about letting somebody disrespect you by laying hands on you guys when a woman does that. It's about walking away and not having to go through that whole process. That's what it's about. You know, besides the fact that you shouldn't hit a woman, but I'm not even going to go. <laughs> hey, the new Ku Klux Klan is not the Klan that your kin folks talked about. John Abar is a member of the Montana Ku Klux Klan, and he says it's out with the old and in with the new. His vision of the Klan is that nationalism is more su is a more superior ideology to rally around than racism. The Washington Times says the new Klan will not focus on race, but rather on reigning in the federal government and keeping Capitol Hill from establishing a new world order under a unified force. So if it's that important to you, John Abar, why don't you start another organization that is not the Ku Klux Klan? <laughs> why don't you do that and get out from under that umbrella? Why don't you denounce the Klan and say it's not about that anymore, it's about this. I cannot imagine, so according to him, the Klan wants more diversity. I cannot imagine that any person of color would join the Klan just because you say you want more diversity in the organization. I just cannot see a, a Latino, an African American, I just can't see people of color joining the Ku Klux Klan, given, given what we all know. I mean, that's just, I, you're just asking for it. You're asking for it. Man, 
I got news on Genuine. Gabrielle Union is talking about those nude pictures. And a man in St. Louis at a uh, religious convention says he has been delivered and he ain't gay no more. And you'll get all that coming up in 20 seconds on the Tony Scott Internet Show. Do you want to reach an audience that you haven't tapped into yet and not blow your budget? The Tony Scott Internet Show is new, growing, and available to you. Advertising on the Tony Scott Internet Show is extremely affordable. Contact us at advertise at TonyScottShow.com. Peace! Hey, welcome back to the Tony Scott Internet Show. Uh, let me uh, do a, a couple of things that I want to tell you about. One is uh, uh, the show that I do with Mark Clark and Troy Johnson called Men on Scandal. We recapped last week's episode, Baby Made a Mess, uh, and got a lot of great feedback. People were like, that's the, that's the best one you guys have done all season long. If you want to uh, watch it or listen to it, you, know, you can get both versions, uh, audio only or the video. Audio, if you're going to the gym, you know, you can bring up your YouTube app on your smartphone and just play it like, you know, you just won't get video. But if you want to watch it, there is video for you to watch and you can get both of them on the YouTube channel uh, and you, you probably let me let me double check real quick because I mean you can go to this and that media channel on uh, on youtube.com or I think you can just put in let me see let me get it right over here this is because uh, I mean you don't have to work so hard and type in so much let's see if this works uh yes no no that's not it no that's not the one all right let's see uh what is it uh let's see and i'll change that one today so i just, I just didn't know so i'll give it one more shot and then we'll just go with what i got so yeah so yeah yeah use use uh youtube.com and then in the search box you just put in this and that media all one word and it'll pull up the page where you can see it right there for yourself. So that's there. Also, our other show we do called Men on Everything. We talk about everything. I also have a tech show. And when I say I have a tech show, it's not the kind of tech show that's going to like, you know, you're going to turn off. It, it's actually, it's tech news, but not the kind where, you know, what the latest motherboard prices are to build a, a Hackintosh. It's not anything like that. It's just simple tech news that everyday people can understand and use. That's what that is, so just so you know. Genuine, the singer, is apparently uh, broke. In fact, he may be even broker than broke. Robert Reeves was executive producer of Genuine's uh, first album, The Bachelor, the one that had Pony on it. And he claims from that album he's owed $250,000. Genuine owes the IRS $300,000. And my understanding that his divorce from Soleil cleaned him out. She got him, but she got him good. She cleaned him out where he doesn't really have any kind of substantial money anymore. I mean, she's got the kids, you know, and she has taken him, as they say, to the cleaners. So, man. And I was saying that TGT thing didn't work out real well. The Tyrese Genuine Tank thing. They, I had, When I was doing radio, I had him in the studio with me, and they, it was a little tension there. I got to be real honest with you. I don't know who was on what and what was what was the problem with each other. I don't know any of that, but they didn't seem like they were setting horses, as they say back home in Texas. I'm just saying. I hope he I hope he can uh, get it together though, because he's got a lot of talent. There's no doubt about that. Gabriel Union uh, was one of the celebrities whose nude pictures were taken off her account. She was hacked. And she did say, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Those are my boobs, all right. And uh, she said that they were intimate pictures that she shared between herself and her husband, Dwayne Wade. At a conference in New York City over the weekend, she opened up about the nude pictures. And she said, I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm quoting now, no matter what people describe to me, it's your fault. You're stupid to take nude photos. That's what happens when you're a celebrity. All this nonsense. She says, they're criminals. What you do with your own body is your choice, period. There's no gray area here. And when someone takes your choice away and your power away over your own body, it's a crime, period. A hacking scandal? We're lessening it, she says, making it more palatable for mass consumption, but it's a crime. 
over a hundred women were targeted. If these women weren't celebrities, there would be there would be much more outrage. But because we're female celebrities, we weren't good victims. We enjoyed it. All the PR is good PR. That's what they say. She says she learned of the photos. By the way, she did contact the FBI. She says the day after my wedding, we're all sitting around rehashing the best day of my life, and I got a text from my my people that there's an article that over 100 female celebrities have been targeted. In the moment, I froze. I was mortified, Gabrielle Union says. Terrified. I just didn't know what to do. I felt I had given so much of myself, but I had saved a little bit for myself and for my husband, and they had taken that from me. Dwayne Wade told Gabrielle Union, honey, we've been through so much worse, and we're fine. And you know what? It is, it is a crime but who was that? Was it Jennifer Lawrence? She said that she was, in, in essence, she was saying she was sexually assaulted. Now that I don't agree with. You know, if, if you want to call it virtual sexual assault, okay, but you were not sexually assaulted. But a crime was committed. What do you call that crime? I'm not sure. Maybe we need to come up with a name for what you're, you are a victim of a crime. Your privacy was invaded, and it probably feels something awful, but it doesn't feel like a sexual assault. I've known people who've been sexually assaulted. That's not the same thing. No disrespect. I'm just saying. There are sexual assaults, and there, there is what happened with you. I'm not, I'm not saying what happened to you is, you know, not important or that you're not a victim because you are, but I wouldn't call it a sexual assault, though. That's just me. What about the guy in St. Louis? Uh, there was uh, a fellow. Now, how did this go down? This was here in St. Louis. The Church of God in Christ, 107th Holy Convocation was going on. And a man declared his deliverance at the church convocation uh, here in St. Louis, saying that he has been cured and he's no longer gay. Did you hear this guy? Did you watch this guy? I can't show you the video right now. This is an audio podcast, but listen to him. Do you believe that the Lord tonight has set you free? Yes, sir. Turn around and tell those people. Tell them. I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. I don't like men no more. <laughs> I said I like women. Women, 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 women. I said women. I'm not gay. I would not date a man. I would not tear a purse. I would not put on makeup. I will. I will love a woman. But will women love on you? Okay. I don't love men's anymore. Stop it. Stop. The guy in the, on the organ and the drums, those guys, there. those guys are off the hook. Those guys who they know when to hit the... In the, oh man, those guys! Those guys are those guys are gold. If, you, if you're a church and you have a couple of those guys who are fierce like that, you need to pay them because <laughs> those guys those guys are awesome. But dude, not all gay men wear uh, makeup or carry purses, man. I mean, come on, you should know that you were gay once. You know, am I going to dispute what he said? No, I don't even know the man. I don't know him. Maybe he's not gay anymore. Hell, I don't know. How does that affect my life? I don't care. You know, if that, if, yeah, man, if you like it, I love it, man. I'm happy for you. If that's the deal. Now, I, I don't know. Do I believe you? Well, we're out of time. <laughs> man, but God bless you, man. If this is what it took for you to, to, you know, in your eyes, to be cured of what you think is a sickness, well, if it works for you, man, well, God bless you and keep on keeping on, man. That's all I got. All right. I am going to leave it right there. We are uh, at about 30 minutes already. Man, it goes by fast. I love doing these shows with you or for you. Uh, and still working on incorporating some things, but talking to some people, picking some brains, stuff like that. So all that is coming up. And uh, my, my website that I had to take down because of uh, budget considerations, I didn't mention that, is going to be coming back up uh, very soon. Probably, maybe even today, actually. So look forward to that. So uh, thank you so much for watching, for sharing, for downloading. It's awesome that you're able to do that for me. I really appreciate it, all right? And uh, don't forget Men on Scandal and Men on Everything, youtube.com, search this and that media, and you'll find uh, that content right there. Have a great day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>